Our fingers are crossed as well. Mayor Rostino, thank you for joining us today. Our next guest made waves last March with a skateboard ride through an empty Clifton Hill, taking video along the way. It was some of the first such footage any of us had seen in the early days of the lockdown. Dave Tebbett, thanks for visiting us once again. What possessed you to get out there with that camera that day in March? I'm, I'm an outdoorsy person. I didn't have too much else going on and it wasn't, wasn't too cold. And I just kind of like riding around and a buddy of mine actually texted me and said, you got to go downtown. You got to go to Clifton Hill and check it out. Like it is dead. Everything closed. Um, even by the waterfall, you know, there's a, a bike path there, a walking path, and there was just no one. So I just thought, yeah, might as well document this. This could be probably the only time in my life where I see this kind of uh, spooky vibe ghost town sort of feel. I remember watching that video the first time and it really brought to life the idea that things were definitely shut down. What did it feel like to actually be there? In the evening when the sun was setting, I was downtown Niagara Falls and earlier that day I was in St. Catharines going over Bur Burgoyne Bridge at rush hour and then seeing the falls in the evening. It, it was kind of spooky. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like, yeah, I know I'm from here, but I kind of want to, I kind of want to go back home where I feel safe. It was, it was really eerie. Later that summer, people started flocking back to Niagara Falls, even though some restrictions were still in place. Did you ever get the idea to get back out there with the camera and maybe take some images of what was happening during the summertime? I actually have been sort of archiving some footage. I, I do want to do like a full documentary um, kind of when we're when we're out of this, um, which is I mean, we're we're now in different colored zones. But yeah, I've been archiving footage along the way. And I think it'd be really neat to put out a longer piece one day just to show uh, my friends, my daughter, just like this is what we lived through. When you go back to that first video, it really started to go viral right off the bat. Uh, what did that feel like for someone like yourself who's a videographer? Yeah, it was cool. I had a few Facebook groups. Um, I think the Falls Tourism picked it up. Obviously, you guys got in touch with me, a local radio station. It was cool just to kind of, um, and it wasn't really, I didn't want the attention on me. I kind of portrayed it and, and showed the footage just how dead some of these high density areas were. And it was really neat that it got traction, um, especially along the 406 there underneath Burgoyne Bridge. I remember standing on Burgoyne Bridge for 30 seconds to a minute, not a single car went by on the highway. So that was that was a really strange feeling and it was I was happy to have my camera. Have you decided what form this documentary might take and how it will all come together eventually? Yeah, I'll definitely put it on my YouTube channel where, where you can see the other videos and, and other uh, work that I've been doing in the past year. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure yet, just kind of archiving footage, just kind of in the early stages, but I think it'll be neat even to show gas prices back then. A year ago, I remember in March, it was 68 cents, I think I caught on video and now we're almost double that. So it'll be cool just to show all that, um, what's, what's changed in a year. Well, we weren't buying a lot of gas back last March. Dave <laughs> Tebbett, thanks for joining us.